guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I'm going to be doing a May and June wrap up video and I'm really really excited because I have never done one before and this is one of my favorite types of videos to watch on YouTube. So let's get right into it. I don't want this to be too long but I'm pretty proud because I've read 16 books I believe in the past two months. This is going to be a pretty long video but I'm going to try my best to make it as concise as possible. So grab some tea, sit down, and let's get talking. So the first book that I read is Eat, Pray, Love by Elizabeth Gilbert. This memoir is about a woman, Elizabeth, who basically goes through a midlife crisis and realizes she's not happy with her life. She chooses to embark on a journey, one year I believe, to Italy, India, and Indonesia to find herself and love herself again. I really enjoyed reading this book. I gave it a four stars. It's really great for female empowerment and self-discovery. The only reason why I didn't give it a five stars was because there were certain parts that were kind of dragging along for me. But besides that, I really enjoyed learning about Elizabeth's experience. And Bali is actually one of my favorite places in the world. I've been there twice now. And it was really refreshing and enlightening to read about some of the history there. If you like traveling at all, or have any kind of wanderlust, or you're kind of in a life rut, I would highly recommend this book. It's great. <laughs> the next book that I read was Fifty Shades Darker by E.L. James, and I rated it at 3.5 stars. I'm sure all of you guys know about the Fifty Shades trilogy. If you guys don't know what this is, this is basically a fan fiction that was created, inspired by the Twilight Saga. This book is about a super reserved and innocent college student named Anastasio who gets involved with a highly successful and quite cold man named Christian Grey. This is the second book in the trilogy and I had already seen the first two movies before I read either book so I already knew already what to expect. This book was no different. It was pretty much in sync with word for word what was going on in the movie. I enjoyed the book a lot but it wasn't spectacular. The next book that I read was the Notebook by Nicholas Sparks. I'm sure most of you guys know what this book is about because there was a very popular movie that's still a classic to this day. For Sappy Romantics, this is definitely the book for you. I found that this book was really good and I finished it in two days. The only thing I have to say about it is it's very identical to the movie, which is obviously a good thing. However, I was kind of hoping to get more of a backstory and more of their emotions that couldn't be conveyed in the movie. Unfortunately, I felt like the book was so short that there wasn't really much more information that I learned. Overall, though, I really enjoyed it. So the next book that I read is Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. This is a self-help book that basically inspires the readers to stop being afraid of reaching your goals and just go out and go, go out and get it. I rated this book five stars because I actually ended up starting my YouTube because of it. I was using all these excuses of why I didn't want to create one, when in reality I'd been wanting to have one for a really long time, and this book just was the final push that got me to making this channel. So thank you, Big Magic. So the next book that I read is I Am Malala, which is a memoir, and I gave this book a five stars. This is the story of a very influential girl who was shot in the head by the Taliban, basically because she refused to be silenced in her fight for education. This book was all around amazing. Parts of the book had me smiling, parts of the book had me crying, parts of the book had me laughing. I think this is a very important read because I really didn't know what was going on in Pakistan during this time and Malala opened up my perspective, especially because I was able to relate to her. We're actually close to the same age, if not the same age, and reading about her love of Twilight kind of struck a nerve with me because we were both experiencing the same kind of fandom for Twilight at the same time, yet we were living such different lives across the world from one another. And I think that everyone could genuinely benefit from reading this book. I feel like I've come out of it with more understanding and appreciation for my education. The next book that I read is An Anonymous Girl by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pacannon. I'm really sorry if I butchered that name. I have weird pronunciation sometimes. This book is a thriller. I rated it a 4.5 stars. So this book is about a broke 20-something year old woman who is desperate for money to take care of her family and she finds a way to participate in this psychological study on a college campus 
and it basically ends up affecting her personal life in the worst way possible. So I'm not going to give a lot more information than that because thrillers are really all about what you don't know, so I'm not going to give you guys more information than you need. But I would say this is a very engaging read. I think I might have finished it in two days. This book just had a very unique writing style and it was really captivating. It switches between the perspectives every other chapter, which kept it really engaging and unique. I loved the way the author used her descriptions. I felt like I was in the room. I felt like I could see the characters brought to life just by her describing their appearance and their clothing and just the ambience and the environment. So I really, really enjoyed that. Overall, I ended up really liking the story. There were a couple twists where I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't see that coming. But I don't know, at the end, I just kind of felt like I wanted more from the ending. I didn't feel satisfied. I didn't feel like it was a super groundbreaking twist, which I think I was hoping for in this book. Something also about this book is that there wasn't a character that I really empathized with or a character that I really loved. I ended up disliking most of the characters and that was kind of hard for me because usually I really go for the protagonist. But there are a lot of morally ambiguous characters in this book which made it really interesting but also quite frustrating. The next book that I read is A Monster Called by Patrick Ness. This is a middle grade novel, more on the spooky side, and it's about a boy named Connor who is dealing with his mother's cancer battle and he meets a monster outside of his house. And that's all I'm going to say about it because it's a very short book and if I say more than that I might give more stuff away. I gave it 3.5 stars. It was enjoyable. There were a couple things that I really did like of the book, but I just wasn't impressed. I wasn't wowed. I've heard a lot of hype about this book. I just felt like it was an okay read for me. It just wasn't a fantastic read. One thing that I really liked about this book though were the pictures. Like look at that. That's beautiful. That's one thing. Why don't all adult books have pictures? I feel like they shouldn't be labeled as kid book. I feel like illustrations really add a lot to a book and there really should be a lot more illustrations incorporated in adult novels. What a brick. So the next book that I read is Behind Closed Doors by B.A. Paris. This is a thriller and I rated it a 5 stars. This book is basically about a perfect couple who seems to be hiding. This book is about a perfect couple named Jack and Grace where Jack is super successful and very handsome and Grace is beautiful and an excellent cook and artist. And there's something not adding up. There's something not right in their household and you're gonna have to read to find out what's going on behind closed doors. That's pretty much the only information that the book synopsis gives you is that they have a seemingly perfect marriage but not everything is as it seems. And it took me a while to get to the really, really good part where I realized what was actually going on. And that was really hard for me because I think it was on page 100 or something. So it was like 100 pages of me just dragging and trying to figure out what happened, what made everything go wrong. But it was a really good read. I was really, really satisfied with the ending. I did feel very resolved. I do have to say this book was a lot more dark than I imagined, especially because I had just read An Anonymous Girl and that's also a thriller. There wasn't a lot of gore in this book, but there was a lot of violence that was implied. Overall, I really liked it and I liked that darkness. It added a lot of suspense to the story. I personally really, really liked the main character, Grace. I empathized with her, I was rooting for her, I was on her side the whole way through, and I would highly recommend this book. The next book that I read is The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho, and it's basically about a shepherd who leaves his life to go and travel the world, and he meets an old man who tells him to search for his personal truth legend and this book basically details about his journey. So I rated this book a 2.5 stars and it was not a bad book by any means but it just wasn't for me. I think that a lot of the big message that was trying to be conveyed had already spoken to me in Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert and so a lot of the really powerful messages that were going on in this book didn't apply to me because I had already been reached in that way by Big Magic. 
So it just didn't work for me. It was a bit slow paced at times, which is interesting because it's a very short book. I think there's only, there's less than 200 pages. Yeah, it took me multiple days to get through this book. There were certain parts that were really interesting and the characters were very likable, but overall it just left me feeling unsatisfied. And I had heard so much hype about this book. I really thought that there was more that was gonna be going on but I ended up feeling kind of disappointed. The next, book that I, the next book that I read is Cruel Beauty by Rosamund Hodge. This is basically a dark spinoff of Sleeping Beauty where there's a girl named Nyx and she's been trained as an assassin ever since the day she was born to kill the dark lord Ignifex and she's betrothed to him. So on their wedding night, she prepares to embark on a quest to murder him. I rated this book a four stars and the reason why is I felt like the magical world was a very fascinating and new concept but I wish that there was more information given in the beginning because for the first 20 to 40 pages, I really had a hard time understanding what was going on. And I, maybe it was just me, but that's why. Also, the main character for me wasn't very likable. I understood partly of how she was feeling and where she was coming from due to the way she was treated by her family. But I don't know, I just didn't have any kind of empathy with her. And if anything, I actually felt bad for Ignifex at times. I will say I loved the magical world in terms of the house and you'll understand what I mean when you read this book but I just loved reading about the different rooms and I wish that I could just visit this or see this in like a short film or something. Oh, now we're getting to a lot of five-star reads, guys. The next book that I read is My Sister's Keeper by Jodi Picoult, and I gave this book a five-star read, and it's 100% worth the five stars. I earned every single star. So first off, I want to say that I was not expecting to like this book and definitely not expecting to love this book as much as I did. I had watched the movie as a young kid, and it didn't leave any kind of impact on me, so I kind of went into this book with a blank slate. I think one of my friends suggested reading it together for a buddy read. I loved this book. It touched my heart in so many ways. Something really unique about this book is that there's different perspectives throughout the book. There's six to seven characters, and each chapter rotates between their perspective, which I thought was really refreshing. So this book is about Anna, who was genetically conceived to be a donor in every way for her terminally ill sister who has leukemia. So this book is basically a drama into their lives and when Anna decides to do something that changes the family dynamic and threatens to rupture it. I don't really know how to explain this book actually, but I really, really liked it. This book just really made me think a lot about what was right and what is wrong. And when you read the book, you can see that everybody genuinely wants to do the right thing, but it's not really clear what the right thing to do is. Just go read this book. It's really great. I couldn't put it down and it was spectacular. So the next book that I read is Kafka on the Shore by Haruki Murakami. I don't want to give anything away about this book, so I'm just going to say that this book is about Kafka Tamura who is running away from home and his life is going to intersect in some way with Nakata who is an old sweet man who had a very peculiar incident occur to him as a child. I rated this book five stars. It was amazing. I've heard a lot about Murakami's books in the past and how amazing and mind-blowing they are. However, I wasn't expected to be taken on the ride as I, as I was. The only thing is I have to say right away, I would not recommend reading this book unless you are at least 16 years old, at least. There's a lot of graphic content when it comes to sexual content, incest, and animal abuse to the max. So if you really aren't able to handle like animal abuse and reading about that, I wouldn't recommend picking up this book because it was actually very hard to read. I would say there's only about 10, 5, 10 pages of it in one specific part of the book, but it was really hard for me to stomach. Overall though, I thought it was a really great book. I felt for all the characters and it was very interesting. I didn't really like love the main character Kafka, but I love Nakata, and if you read this book you'll see why. He's just like a super optimistic, happy-go-lucky old man, and I just want to give him a hug and tell him that I'll love him and be his friend forever. I was kind of 
meh about Kafka. He does a lot of really questionable things. If I had to say Kafka on the show reminds me of anything, it kind of reminds me of a much darker adult version of Studio Ghibli in terms of kind of all the random things and slightly magical things that occur. I don't really know what else to say about it. I think that you need to go into Murakami's books not really knowing or expecting a lot because it will take you on a metaphysical mind bender. So the next book that I read is Fifty Shades Freed by E.L. James. So this is the last book in the Fifty Shades trilogy and this is the only book that I didn't watch the movie beforehand. I had to say I was really happy with it actually. I accidentally got the large print version so the text is huge. I can't even. This whole book is bigger than my head. I think there's 800 and something pages in the large version but it was really nice to read that way actually. I wish more books had larger print. So I'm not going to give anything away about this especially if you haven't read the first two books but it's a really fun kind of chick flick saucy read. I gave this book four stars and I was very happy with it. There were certain parts where I was actually kind of caught off guard, but not really, but I enjoyed it. And I'm happy I read it, but I'm also ready for the next chapter in my life. Okay, guys. The next book that I have to show you guys is, drum roll please, The Silent Patient by Alex Micheletis. And I love this book. Thriller, I gave it five stars hands down. I love this book so much. In fact, that I read all 323 pages out loud to my boyfriend because I wanted him to hear every single detail of the book so that he could have that huge <gasps> moment that I did. This book is basically about a painter who is married happily to her husband. One day he comes home from work and she shoots him in the head five times before going completely mute. No one knows exactly what went down that night, and she's sent to a psychiatric ward. This book basically follows a psychotherapist who purposely gets hired into her psychiatric ward so that he can find out what went down that night. I have to say, there were so many twists and turns, but I loved every moment of it. I can't even, I don't even know what to say. There was kind of a slower buildup, but I enjoyed every moment of it, and it all becomes relevant information at the very end. Everything comes together beautifully. And so this is actually his first novel, which is really cool. It makes me want to go out and read any novels he comes out with in the future, because it was so engaging, and I really was so surprised and caught off guard by the outcome. And I just love this book. So The next book that I read is Once and For All by Sarah Dessen. I loved Sarah Dessen books as a kid. I loved Dreamland, and I loved Just Listen. So I was really excited to pick up this book. Actually, this is even a signed copy, so. <laughs> this book follows Luena, who is a daughter of a successful wedding planner. And funnily enough, her and her mother are both highly skeptical of happily ever afters because they both didn't have a romantic happily ever after. And Luena specifically experienced a very traumatic first love loss. Eventually, Luena meets this guy who is a player and very happy-go-lucky. I'm sure you can guess where the story goes from there. It was a very easy read. It didn't take me very long to get through it, but it just didn't wow me in the way that Just Listen or Dreamland did. One thing that I really liked about this book was that there were very likable main characters. I feel like the past two months I've been reading a lot of books that have morally ambiguous characters to the point where I really just don't like them as people and I felt like this was really refreshing and nice to go back to reading about someone who I actually could relate to and someone who was just a good natured person. This book also really made me nostalgic for my high school graduation because she's a senior in high school. It was just a very different kind of not knowing what was in my future kind of excitement and I don't know, it just made me miss that. The last book that I read is The Devil Wears Prada by Lauren Weisberger. And this is a very popular book to movie adaptation that I've heard about for a long time. I still haven't watched the movie, I know, I'm crazy. So this book follows Andrea, who's fresh out of college, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, looking for a job desperately so that she can buy an apartment. And she ends up landing the assistant role of one of the most famous fashion publications in the world. Basically, her boss is very, very, very cruel. 
clearly by the name. I rated this book a three star read and it's not because the book was bad in any means. It's just that it wasn't a wow book for me. It wasn't super captivating. It took me a lot of concentration to get through it. There were things that were really interesting that was going on, and I really felt empathy for the main character. But I think it was a fun read overall, and it really does make you question your priorities in life. So thank you guys all for watching my video, and I hope that you find at least one new book that you're wanting to read. So yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!